Well, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's nice to join together this morning by this wonderful means of technology. Uh, having a kind of a long week and a long day, but remembering also our uh, lectionary study yesterday. A lot of great uh, discussion regarding the lessons and some good insight, which brings up a little bit of thoughts for our Romans 10 reading, the epistle for this next week. So I want to share with you a little bit of that that uh, we have, and then I kind of have a uh, an adapted reflection from uh, Luke and our ministries that's entitled the do-it-yourself salvation. Now from Romans 10, it says, but the righteousness based on faith says the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For everyone who calls the name of the Lord will be saved. Here ends the word of the Lord. Now, growing up, as you know, I was a pastor's kid and went to a Catholic high school. And a lot of people that I knew back then, I mean, outside of those who were Catholic, went to school with, and those in my own church, which I had a lot of friends in our own Lutheran church, a lot of the rest of them were uh, non-denominational types. And with that, they had this idea that this was kind of a, a, a step-by-step -step process of how one is saved, kind of like a, you would say a do-it-yourself type salvation. And it goes this way. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, that means if you wanted to be saved, you had to do two things. You had to do two things. First off, you had to make sure that you said with your words, Jesus is Lord, at least once in your life. Probably it was when you were out in public, you know, when you were being baptized or else it was when you were witnessing to someone else. The second is this, that you had absolutely sure that you believed in Jesus' resurrection. I mean, if you did these two things, you were safe. You, you were saved. You were safe and saved. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you're safe. That's it. Now, the problem, of course, is that we were reading the verse all wrong. We thought everything depended upon us. We had to say the right words. We had to believe the right things and do the right things correctly. To that end, that made us very responsible for saving ourselves. No wonder we were worried and uptight all the time, thinking we had to do just the right things and say it just the right way. Now that I'm older, I realize that Paul wasn't laying down a set of instructions. He was describing what life looks like after the Holy Spirit saves us and after he gives us life, after he gives us forgiveness and salvation through Jesus our Lord. Do you want to know what a Christian looks like? Well, the Apostle Paul tells us in this very verse, Christians are ones who confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. What does this mean? Well, it means that Jesus is in charge of everything, not us and not any powers in this world that think are so great. It means that Jesus is God, come down to earth to live and suffer and die and rise for us, to make us his own. It means that Jesus is in charge of me and not me myself. He's in charge of my salvation so that I can stop worrying. Or just think about that. What it means to be a Christian is that I trust God wholly and completely for everything in my life, for my salvation, for everything. He's the one that accomplishes all of it. But here's the second part of that. What does it mean to believe in the resurrection? It means that we know Jesus is exactly who he said he is. He is God's son, sent to be our savior from the power of death, sin, and evil. You see, God would not raise a liar. It means that Jesus succeeded in what he came to do, and that death, death cannot keep him down. It means that death can't keep us down either since he has promised to share his victory with us and raise us from the dead too. See, all this it means that Christians have a joy and a hope that never leaves us. Even when we are deep in trouble or grief or frustration, our salvation comes from Jesus, not us. And so we can relax because everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame. So when you hear these words read this next weekend in our worship, don't think this is some kind of do yourself how you can save yourself. No, no, no. It's rather describing what a Christian looks like, what a Christian does. It's one who confesses that Jesus is Lord 
and who trust in his resurrection. So everything we do and say is always pointing to the fact that he is in control. Control of us, control of our lives, control of our salvation, control of all. That he is God over all and God above all. So as you go out throughout your day this day, know that God is with you and that all that Jesus says is true. That he came to suffer and die for you. That he came to save you. And that you have a joy in knowing that no matter what you face in this day, in this life, nothing will be able to separate you from his love. That's a promise you can rest assured on. Because Jesus is not a liar. God would not raise someone like that. No, Jesus is the very son. He's your Messiah. He's your Savior. And so we live joyfully, confessing, believing, knowing that because of Jesus, we are saved. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you for being our Savior. Not us and what we think we can do or say or feel or think, but rather your gift to us. So Lord, help us then to just relax. To relax and simply just trust you. Trust you with everything. Bless us today and every day. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me on this uh, morning. Uh, hopefully it's a good reminder for you when you hear the readings this weekend that uh, it's Jesus who's in charge of all. Our salvation, our life today, our life forever. Rest assured in that, knowing who you are and whose you are. Live with joy and gladness. Have a wonderful day. Know that I love you and aloha.